that to worship the Lord today. Amen. Not because the church doors are open, but because of who he is and because of what he's done. How merciful he's been, how kind he's been. Hallelujah. I know God will bless you during the, the Christmas season and some of you will see many gifts and some of you the greatest gift of all was this to know that Jesus is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That was my greatest gift. Knowing that Jesus was still on the throne. That he was still making ways. Hallelujah. That he was still answering prayers. Oh, how awesome is he?
Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Consider yourself to be the dirty dish. Oh, it once was the dirty dish. Because everybody's not dirty. But there's some that are dirty. So today's topic is talking about repent. Get your slate white clean and repent. We're in a new year. Some of us are making resolutions. We're saying, I'm going to lose 20 pounds this week or next year or this year. Not be next year for some. You may be saying, I'm going to visit the sick board. I'm going to go to the orphanage. I'm going to visit the widow's board. But at this particular time, some of the first thing you must do is repent. And the Lord gave me this analogy concerning getting the plate clean. He said, because that's how we are. Some of you are dirty. And he said, most people use hot water to help dissolve the dirt and the grime of their dishes. He said, but for you, it's going to take the blood of Jesus. As we well know, some of you may say, how can red blood create a clean body? It's all supernatural. What God Jesus has done, he went to the cross, shed his blood for you and for me, rose up from the grave. And it is his blood that will cleanse us supernaturally. And once we are cleansed supernaturally, we are clean and indeed clean because of the blood. And so the Lord gave me this. He said, listen, tell them this. Jesus is Jesus comes and through you agreeing with him to be cleansed. A lot of times when we're in the world and we want to come to Jesus, we'll say such things as, mm, I, when I get right, I'll come to him. When I, when I get it together, because I'll come to him. Do you know that if you could get it together, you would have come by now? Wouldn't it need it? You would have come by now. And so the Lord said, to let them know, I'm the only one that can wash all their sins away. Testify. Come on here. You're dirt which can consist of self righteousness. I need to hear me now. We're still talking about that plate. But now we talk about the plate. We're talking about supernatural. We're talking about spiritual things. Because the Lord in this season said, since it's the first Sunday, might as well go ahead and get every clean thing clean right now. Get clean right now so it can be good for the rest of the year. So the Lord said, the dirt can be self righteousness. We always think we're right. And everybody else is wrong. And it's either my way or no way. Come on. That's what we call self righteousness. There was a time back in the day, I remember, when, when, when it was very popular for, for women not to wear pants, you know. And I'm not telling you what to wear and what not to wear. But one thing I do know is this. If your heart is clean, it's not clean, you might as well have kept the pants on. And the makeup, and the jewelry, and the earring. Because God is coming back after the heart. Right, come on. That's fine. God is coming back. Testify. Amen. So another thing the Lord said that was would be considered dirt on your slate is pridefulness. A lot of people have not given their lives to the Lord yet because of pride. They don't want to lay aside their way. They don't want to lay aside the way they do things. And the Lord is calling us today to lay aside us mm. and to take on Him so that we might be a people pleasing unto the Lord. Because we got to work. We say, we, we that confess the name of Jesus. We that say we love the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. We have a work to do. And that work is to draw others to Christ. Come on. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That is supposed to be at the forefront of our conversation. They can call you a holy roller, or she thinks she's so safe, all this and that. Don't, don't worry about that. You got to do the will of the Lord because you have got to put Christ at the forefront of your life and when you're talking to others. Even in your testimony. Sometimes I'll be like, you know, in conversations, well, today I'm, I'm going to kind of tone it down a little bit. But it'll come right back up again. 
I cannot tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Well, what he did for me, how he brought me out, how he healed, how he delivered, how he set me free. It is your testimony that the world needs of what the Lord did for you. Sometimes at the church, some of you will come to me real quick and tell me what the Lord is doing. Go back out, outside of these four walls, and tell them. Because people need to know that the Lord is still on the throne and that he's still making ways, that he's still delivering. He's not lost his power. Hallelujah. Another thing that the Lord said that was dirty on the plate, I'm going to get to the repentance part. He said, cheat. I don't know if it's cheating. These are the words he gave me. And, I, and this is what I believe. I believe if God gave it to me, something's going on, something's up. There used to be a song back in the day, deep that said, I smell a rat. Oh, y'all know, everybody here know what it's been saying. It used to be playing a lot of Tars Paradise. I smell a rat. A two legged, low down it, dirty rat. <laughs> and so, with this, with this dirt, with this dirt, cut, it's, it's saying, hey, there's something going on. These are some sins that, that have been found, found guilty in this place. So, so, so what I couldn't do is only expose what the Lord said was in here. And it might not be you, 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 but it's somebody. And you know what? I'm going to cry loud and spare not because when I stand before the Lord, I'm going to hear him say, well done. Come on. Good and faithful servant. You were faithful over every word I gave you. You told them everything I told them to tell them so that they could be set free. So whatever's in the dark shall walk. Come to the light. You already know. Mm -hmm. You already know. So today we shine the light on. I think there was a song down there that said shine the light on. Yeah. We shine the light on it today. Go ahead. Go ahead and get cleaned up today. So you can go the rest of the year clean. Clean. Get the plate clean. Get the slate clean. The Lord said that stealing was going on. I don't know who's stealing what. I don't know if you're trying to steal a husband or a wife. I don't know if you're trying to steal somebody money. I don't know if you're trying to steal somebody bank account or their identity. I don't know. But I couldn't tell you today. The Ten Commandments says in it, thou shalt not steal. Now, I'm not up here to talk out of myself. I'm up here to tell you what the word of the Lord said so that you can get your house in order. Because let me tell you what's coming out the while. Payday. Come on. Payday's coming out the wild. And you got to get your house in order now. You don't have time to wait. This is the first Sunday in, in the year. Hopefully at the end of this summer, you'll come up and you'll repeat and you'll go out and do the will of the Lord. The Lord also said, Barbara, not only is there some stealing going on, but there's some hypocrisy going on. I'm going to reveal. I'm going to shine the light on Hypocrisy. What are you talking about, Barbara? You say one thing, you act one way, but you do something different. Well. Yeah, you come in here and you act holy and sanctified, but when you leave, you talk about people. You don't, you don't try to help your brother and sister when you see them in the fall. You don't try to restore them back to the spirit of meekness. You don't try to draw them back to the Lord. You press them down. And the devil is a liar. You cannot continue in that way. A lot of people have left the church of God. I'm not talking about this church. Many churches. Because people have heard them. They act one way with them in one situation. In another situation, they act a different way. You're talking right. Who are you? Are you saved or not? You are you talking right. Or not? You're talking right. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. The Lord said another thing was mailing and other folks' business. That's the part of the world. And see, what I do when the Lord starts dealing with me at 3 and 4 in the morning, about wherever he's seeing me, whether it's here, on, on, on my prayer Zoom in the morning time, he, I, I write it down. And then when it's time for it to come up, I grab out and speak. And then the blood is not required in my hands anymore, like Pontius Pilate. I can wash my hands of it because I've done what the Lord told me to do and I've said what the Lord told me to say. But some people are meddling in other folks' business. And call them, and I've said this before, not just here, but I said, when you put your mouth on somebody else in a negative way, you cause the enemy to go.
go and try that person with your words. How dare you do that? Would you want somebody to do that to your husband, to your children, to your family, on your job, about your finances? Come on here. The Lord says, stop that and other folks' business. If you want a man of pride, as I told somebody not long ago, whenever I, when they said to me, well, you know, I saw so and so. I said, well, if you saw it, God allowed you to see it, so that meant you needed to pray. Amen. If God shows you something, pray about it. It's his thing. Because he showed you no reason. If God shows you sin anywhere, pray about it. In the body of Christ, pray about it. Somebody needs your prayer. And sometimes, folks may know what they're doing, and sometimes they may not. But you need to pray so God can fix it, so God can heal, so God can deliver. Amen. Oh my God. Hear me on the day, y'all. Hear me on the day. Hear me on the day, y'all. The Lord said another thing manipulation. What in the world? I said, Lord, who's manipulating people? What's going on? He said, they're doing things manipulatively, make it look one way, but it's really another way. It's almost like hypocrisy, but they do things and they don't think nobody else knows. You know, there's some people that think they're the smartest one. They think they're the smartest one, the shiniest apple in the paint. Yeah, they think they're the smartest one. But let me know, let me tell you what's sharper than that. The Holy Ghost. Come on. Because the Holy Ghost discerns evil and good. Don't try to fool the Holy Ghost now. Because the Holy Ghost can't detect stuff. One thing I know about the Holy Ghost and when it deals with me, I don't be looking for fault in folks. I don't be looking for fault, but the Holy Ghost will reveal to you what you need to know. If you stay connected to the God that you see, Jesus will reveal to you stuff. He'll let you know now. Don't now listen. Don't get it twisted. Just because sometimes we don't say anything don't mean we don't know. Come on. Manipulate We cast it out with you in Jesus' name. The other one is backstabbing. With me and the friend who got turned my back, you better stab him in the back. That verbally she ain't worth 20 to me. That's your opinion. The last time I checked, the Lord delighted in me. Come on here. You better know who you are. And it's not being cocky. It's not being uh, trying to th th think you are all of that. No. You better know who you are in Christ. Because if you don't, you may never get one word of encouragement from anybody. And in this walk we live in this day and time, with, with, with the enemy coming from the lock right from the left, you better get in the world and find your place and know who you are. Amen. The Bible tells me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Right. Now I tell you what, my soul knows it right well. There was a time when I didn't feel that. Why? Because I wasn't in the Word. If you get in the Word, you can become stable. Your feet will be planted on solid ground. Hallelujah. How awesome my God is. It's not His will that any of you perish. But after today, if you perish, if you go out of here and you don't repent before you get out of here, that's between you and your God. Let me go ahead and finish up here. I'm not trying to be popular. I'm not trying to be trying to get a whole lot of likes. All I want to do is tell you what the Lord said. The Lord said the other thing was lust. Uh-oh. Not just sexual lust, but some of us have a deep lust for things. We just collect stuff. We collect stuff. I've been guilty. I, my husband thought that, yeah. I've been so guilty of that. So I started cleaning out my closet last year. I started it last year. I started cleaning out stuff and just started giving it away. Just started giving it away. And I walk in my closet now, and it's not as bad as it used to be, and I feel lighter. <laughs> I feel lighter because I don't have as much as I used to. And I thank God for that. But then let's talk about that lust. Let me tell you something. Satan desired to see if you like we. Come on. Just like he did Jesus told Peter. He desired to see if you like we, and he'll use anybody. Anybody to lure you in. In anything. And lust comes when you don't know who you 
going to trust Jesus. Do you hear me? Because see, Jesus, if you know who you are, and when that deer roll up on you, talking about you look good, you smell good, and you might taste good, I'm keeping it real. You know, you know the talking street. What you need to do is say the blood of Jesus is against you. And even if you're single, you know what you need to do? You need to back it up because if that been to the place, and I saw this the way it says, before any man can get to you, they gotta go through Jesus first. For you single women. Everything that look good ain't good. Come on. Everything that smells good, got the hair right, shade, everybody got the eyebrows arch weave to the right side. That does not mean that who, who God has sent to you. You gotta check the spirit first. Learn to check the spirit of a person. Come on, sister. If you're gonna be in, if you're gonna be in close proximity to them, if you if you're gonna plan on marrying them, nothing after them, you better know what kind of spirit they got. Because yeah. everything else is irrelevant. You hear me? Lust. It's the killer. Yes, it is. And once you fall into that temptation, let me tell you what. Once you fall into that temptation, the enemy will play it over and over in your mind. To the point that, Lord, I just I guess I better call you. Let me see, let me see what's going on. Don't even go on a fast. Hmm. Go on a fast. Let God deliver you. Because he's well able. But yeah. you know what? It's, all of these sins that I'm talking about can be eliminated whenever you submit to Come on. No, you hypocrite. Testify, sister. We got to walk holy, y'all. Somebody is looking at us. Somebody is depending on us to walk holy. Somebody is wanting you to pray through for them. And because of the sin state on your life, you can't even get a prayer through. Well, you're talking right. A sin state. Because the Bible says if you offend the law in one point, come on. You get rid of it all. You guilty of it all. Mm, 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 so today, I just want to say, listen, get the plate while clean. Let the plate, but it, uh, we know that regular plates are going to only be clean with dish detergent. If you got a dishwasher like me with finish or the other type of cascade. But, but your body, this temple, this plate, this plate, it can only be what clean by the blood of Jesus, and that is through your repentance. It is through your repentance. Come on, I got a few more sins. Nobody's going to want to be a stick to this thing here. How do you How do How am I thinking you're better than Uh oh. Just because you got a coach spot for me. Come on. Oh, Louis Vuitton. Come on, here. Come on. You th listen, these things are going to burn. Do you hear me? It's all going to burn. Do you hear me? Got the latest iPhone now. You know, I. You got the latest car. You know, got the latest jewelry. All this. All that stuff is going to burn. <laughs> you need to be getting the latest word from the Holy Ghost to assist somebody. <laughs> if you sold out trying to find that person, trying to get that latest word, you can stick out the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and say, what would you have me to do, Father? What, who is it? Who should I be praying for now? Through the midnight hour, all through the day. Who is it that needs my prayer, Lord? I'm here. I'm, I'm a vessel ready to be used by you, oh God. I lay down my life, oh God, so that you might rise up in me. Who is it, God? What would you have me to do? Amen. You're talking right. Unforgiveness. Uh, my, my, my. This I talked about that before. I'll make it brief. Let me tell you. Holding on to grudges don't do you any good. It imprisons you. That person that was once your friend is no longer your friend. When she said this and that the third, let it go. Let it go. That's what she said. Don't you be named among them the walk in unforgiveness. Because unforgiveness causes sickness. I'm telling you, you hear me? I know what I'm talking about. Unforgiveness brings forth a lot of diseases. 
because you got that hatred in your heart, you, you're mad at somebody because of what they did. Let it go and let God deal with it. Be free in Jesus' name. Forgive and be free. I remember when I was in high school, there was a girl, oh boy, I hate her. Ah, uh, I won't say, but I hate her. After I got saved, the Lord said, God, forgive her. The hate is bothered up. I'm like, so every time I would see her, I would know, I would smile. When I got to the point, I would speak to her. And after a while, I was hugging her. And now when we see each other, we'd be so glad to see each other. I had to lay it down. You can't stay, say that you're a child of most high and you won't forgive folk. Because I'm married to her. She did this to my cousin and that to my brother, and I'm done. What did Jesus say that about you? The same forgiveness you seek, you must give. I'm trying to help you out this morning because I want you to make it in. It's a new year. We want to start it off right. So what we're going to do first, we'll get rid of all the sin. Get, get washed and cleaned up by the Holy Spirit so that we can go on in this new year free and not weighted down. Glory to God. The other thing was hatred and lying. Just hate folk for no reason, just a hater. Mm, 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 Your mm, folks mm. say they're sipping on that hater and right? out of them. Mm. All I can say is hate is not a God. There's no need to do it. And the other one is lying. As I told my granddaughter and my grandson, the kids will tell you right now, thou shalt not bear Fault with. false witness. She can tell you real quick. Because that's not good, it's not a God. It doesn't profit anybody anything to lie. It doesn't profit you anything to lie. Tell the truth and be made, and be made free. Yeah. And the Lord said, what a dirty plate you are or have been. But this type of washing can only be done by the Lord. Okay, this is me well. I can't, wash, I can't wash your sins away. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash your sins away. You, you may say, how can red blood wash away my sins? It's all supernatural, as I said earlier. See, Jesus can take your dirty black soul and wash it with red blood, and you can come out white as snow. Come on here. It's all supernatural. But first and foremost, you must repent. What is repent, Bob? You must check your inner labyrinth. What is that? Your inner path, inner jungle that you got going on, which means your heart, mind, and soul. You must bring it into subjection to the Spirit of God. How much you said I can do this? I must first have a willing mind. That's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You must first have a willing mind. A mind to turn from any wicked way, wicked person, wicked place, or any wicked thing. You can't be saved unless you have a mind that won't be. You, you can't. I mean, uh, uh, until you make up in your mind. I remember when I gave my life to Lord, May 27, 1984. When I came out, I, I had made up in my mind. The Lord had dealt with me for a long time. And like the some of you, you still haven't given me a lot for him. He's been dealing with you for a long time. But let me tell you what, payday is coming after a while. I don't know if he's coming in a rapture. I don't know if you're going to be called home through death. But all I know is you need to get your house in order. Amen, sir. Get your house in order. To that soul that keep backing up, get your house in order. Come to Jesus. He needs you to come to him. He wants to clean you up from every infirmity, every disease, every sin that the enemy thought would entrap you to the day you die. See, that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to take your sins with you to the grave. But today I couldn't have tell him, not so. Not so. Tell him not so today. Tell him not so, because he don't get to make that choice. You do. Repent. Hallelujah. We got to repent. In Acts 9, 1 through 4, Paul was knocked out the, out the ground by an evil. He was knocked on the ground because he was doing evil by persecuting the church. Okay? He was persecuting the church and he was on his way to try to get permission to persecute more people. Those that won't even in the church. But this is what my God did. He knocked them right off that horse. He knocked them right off. And see, this is what we're fixing to pray. Some folk get ready to get knocked off. Knocked off that sin. He brought problems on that horse. He, and, 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 and the light shot from heaven. And he said, Lord, what was what? Lord, what would you have me to do? 
And he and the, and the Holy Spirit, God, the Lord spoke to him and said, Why persecuted thou my people? And some of y'all are persecuting the people of God, and God is trying to bring you out. He wants he want you to bring you out. He wants to bring you out. He, he wants to, want to do a new thing in your heart and in your mind. And not only are you persecuting, let me tell you what's going on. If you have not given your life to the Lord, you're causing other people to go to hell with you. Because you are leading them that way yourself. Because a lot of people are following some of y'all. And your life is an example to them. And some of them want to be just like you. Examine your life at this minute, at this moment. Do you believe that you're living a life that's pleasing before God that would draw others to Him? If not, you're going to have to repent. What is repent, Barbara? Repent means two things. Let me tell you what it means. Repent, repent means to turn from sin and turn to righteousness. And so when you repent, you're saying, Lord, forgive me. I repent of my evil. And now I will do good. That's what repent is just that easy. Some of y'all make salvation so hard. But if you give your life to the Lord and you say you repent of your sin, you're sorry for your sins by having a heart to do those things that were unpleasing to the Lord, that's what the Lord is looking for. That's what's required of you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The act of turning from sin and changing one orientation from rebellion against God to acceptance of God's will and his lordship. A patient God allows all persons to repent. See, he's allowing you time to repent. He's giving you space. He's giving you space right now. Every morning you wake up, when you lay down at night in the very image of that, but you don't even know what's going on when you sleep. He wakes you up. His goodness and his mercy. That he, he bestows upon us every morning. And the Lord is saying, I need them to repent, Barbara. I need them to repent. Hallelujah. You can't afford to waste your time. See, Psalms 9 and 12 says, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Did you hear me? Teach us, O oh Lord, to number our days. To think about, okay, I just turned 60 in December. And I, I've been thinking, wow. You know, the Bible talks about three score and ten. Okay? Close to seventy. I don't know how long the Lord's going to allow me to be here, but while he's here, I'm going to walk till Jesus comes. I'm going to walk. I'm going to tell people about the Lord. They might say, she's just a holy roller. I don't care. Because I know one day, if I keep on doing the work, I'm going to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And you should want the same for yourself. And you should want the same for your family, your loved ones, your community. You got to repent. You can't carry what doesn't belong to you, the Lord said. He said, you cannot carry what doesn't belong to you. Sin doesn't belong to you. Do you hear me? Sin is a way. Can I get an amen? Sin is a way. Hallelujah. It was handed to you by the devil. Cast it off of you by repenting as God to forgive you. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, therefore, Seeing we also are the past about with such a great cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight, Lord, have mercy, and the sin which does so easily beset you. This is already telling you. It's easy to sin. Come on, here. Y'all know it's easy to sin. Hallelujah. But the word of the Lord is saying here in Hebrew to lay it aside. And let us run with patience to race that is set before us. Looking where? Unto Jesus. No, after Hallelujah. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who was the dude that was set before him and endured the cross. Despising the shame and sat down at the right hand from God. See, this, this is what's going to make it hard for you if you don't forget. When you stand before God, he's going to say this. I sent my son up for you because I loved you. My only begotten son. And what did you do? You did not accept him. You refuse to accept his gift, which was the Holy Ghost, to lead God and teach you. And what are you going to say? What you don't, you don't want to hear is depart from me, I know you not. 
He no longer is of iniquity. See, it's, you know, you know, but this is the first of the year, Barbara. That's not what I plan. Listen, what you need to plan is to eat your soul right. What you need to plan is to start seeking the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Because Jesus is coming back. And let me teach you something that once you receive the Holy Ghost, it will teach you all things that you need to know. Mm. Amen. It'll teach you. Yes. I'm telling you. Yes. See, habitual sin is saying, I need deliverance. Listen, listen here. Did you hear me? Habitual sin, that thing you keep dibbling and dabbling in. All you really say is, I really need deliverance. I, I can't come out of this by myself. I need the Lord to help me. Well, today's your day. Today's your day to come out. Today's your day to be set free. Sin is anything that is before God in your life. We call it idolatry. Lord, have mercy. See, in Exodus 23, through six, it says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. But I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Listen, when you sin and you have children, all that that serpent want to do is go to the bloodline. And then the children have to put up with the sin you did if they don't know how to walk. Did you hear me? Nobody wants to talk about that part right there. But it's so anyhow. And so we got to pray. So when our children do things contrary to what we think they should do, we got to pray for them. We can't, we can't belittle them because why? We were once in sin. And we came very short. And now we got to pray through. Don't start calling them names. Don't start saying you're crazy, you're stupid. I thought you had better sense than that. No, you need to pray because you don't know what's skipped over you from your grandmother, from your mother, from your great great grandmother that's trying to come down through your children. Now, people don't want to talk about that part, but I just come and tell you today there's a form of repentance. There is a form of repentance that needs to occur in your life so God can be glorified, so you can be delivered from your sin. Willing to forgive others, forgive sinners. Jesus has, to, has looked, looked past your sin and shown you mercy. Now it's your turn. Help those who are new converts. I want to finish here, everybody. Take heed to yourself. Luke 17, 3 and 4. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times a day, Forgive. Seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Yes. See, the Lord is calling you to repentance because it's a new year. Mm-hmm. And he wants you to get your slate clean. And I, I, I say to all of you, come to Jesus. Don't continue to carry the weight of sin around. Sin is heavy. And the enemy wants to stay in your mind constantly nagging you about stuff. When you, when you accept the Lord Jesus, you've been given authority and power over the enemy to cast down every evil work. Everything that the enemy sent to you, you can send it back. Because you've been given power. And because you've been given authority. John 16 and 13 says this. How be it when the spirit of truth is coming? Hallelujah. He will guide you into all truth. This is the Holy Spirit, child. But he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. This is what the Holy Ghost will do for you. It will show you things to come. You, you don't have to be caught off guard. Oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Oh, when did that? I didn't. I had no idea. But if you stay connected to the vine, if you go ahead and get yourself washed, hallelujah, you go ahead and get yourself washed in the blood of Jesus, if you will go ahead and repent and ask the Lord to come in 
into your life to change your heart, to change your mind, to give you a new direction. He'll do it. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. We're not waiting for another Sunday. We're not waiting until, until Monday because tomorrow is not promised. Look at the state of the world today. We got wars and rumors of war. We got earthquakes and diamond places. We got all these things going on. Everything that the Bible talks about is going on. Yes. All you yes, gotta do yes. is read the Bible. That's and right. Look at the state of the world. That's right. It is preparing for the coming of our Lord. Yes. 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 Look at all these these uh, 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 musicians, Taylor Swift, and all them doing all this crazy mess, demonic mess. And you think the Jews are listening to that mess? You need to pay attention. You should know all the lyrics that's going on. Whatever they listen to. What social media site they're on. You should know everything. Don't be the bug your head with them like it's all right. It is not all right. Because whatever you approve, they feel like it's okay. Preach. You're going to have to give an account if your child is not following right. When you stand before the Lord. So today, come on and get the plate clean. Let us stand to our feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. The Lord needs you. This isn't a message just to make you feel bad. This is a message to say, look, hell is real. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost.
corporately. You want me to pray in the music? Let me know.
Lord, we want to please you. Lord, we pray for Keisha who's here. Lord, we thank you for touching her body. We thank you for bringing her out of the hospital. Oh, God, one more time. Oh, God, we praise you today for what you're doing in her life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for everyone here. Every person in leadership. Every deacon. Every trustee. Every mother. Every usher. Every member here, God. We plead the blood of Jesus right now, God. We pray in the name of Jesus that they will have a heart to tell them want to please you, God. Forget about the program, but just want to please you. Forget about their way, but just want to please you. Forget about how it used to be done, but just want to please you so that others might be saved, so that others might be delivered in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you on today for who you are. We come into this new year because you allowed it to be so. Lord, we want you to get the glory out of our lives. Lord, use us for your glory. In the name of Jesus, help us, oh Lord, to be pleasing unto you every single day. When we go to work, in the name of Jesus, when we drive along the highway, when we talk on the phone, whatever we do, let it all be pleasing unto you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we call this place sanctified. We call this place the house of prayer. In the name of Jesus, we call this place the house of soul to deliver, set free, and heal. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you today. But what you're going to do, the doors you're going to open, and the ways you're going to make. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, listen here. Some of you didn't repent. But you need to repent. The Lord said, some of you didn't repent. You came because you always want his blessing. You only want his blessing. You don't want anything else. But I come to tell you today, that it's time to give him all of you. You need to lay aside your way and give it all of you. Nothing else is going to work. Peace can't come totally because he's got to have all of you. So we bless God on today for those of you who have decided to give him all of you. In the name of the Father. Is there anyone who want to be saved today? Anybody be, anyone who want to be saved? Want to be, give their lives to the Lord? Commit their way to the Lord? Or if you can trust in him, he can bring some things to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You want to say today? All you got to say, I repent of my sins. Lord, forgive me. Take me back, Father. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. I believe Jesus died on the cross for that. He rose for all time. I feel like giving myself to you, Lord. A living sacrifice. I want to live holy. I want to live righteous. So you might be pleased with me.
restore the joy back into me. Don't continue to keep on walking without protection. Y'all think it's a joke if you want to. But when the time comes and God will allow the enemy to release his demons on you, it's going to be too late then. Just like the rich, the good rich ruler, or the rich man that would that his brother was killed and he was asking Jesus, let me just let me go out there and warn him. Let me go back and warn him. He said, no. He had an opportunity here like you did. It's too late. So don't keep playing with your life. Thank mm -hmm. you.